Bosses are probably the universal highlight of Elden Ring. You are much more likely to remember what fighting Melania was like, opposed to what fighting Clayman number 23 was like. So I wanted to know what would happen to the game if only bosses and friendly NPCs remained. In this video, I'll be exploring how quests, items, and gameplay are changed if non-boss enemies were removed. I went through and deleted every enemy in the game. Soldiers, bats, bubble blowers, and annoying dogs have all been taken out of the game. I did this with the help of DS Map Studio. This allowed me to go through each map piece of the game, drill down into the enemies, and then delete all the enemies and hostile NPCs within the area. The objects under the enemy section are not all mob-like enemies that would respawn. It also contains friendly NPCs like merchants, sites of grace, and of course any bosses in the area. So I wasn't able to just delete the entire enemy section within a map piece. I picked up a system to delete enemies faster. Most of the friendly NPCs have lower model numbers along with the Sites of Grace. The regular enemies usually start after the Sites of Grace. The bosses can be mixed in somewhere towards the middle and then the animals like goats and eagles are at the end. I mainly use the right panel to check the NPC param which would name the enemy instance. I was then able to batch delete the enemies and animals without touching the bosses or other NPCs. Once I think all the enemies are removed, I can save the changes. Usually I get a bunch of pop-ups at this time telling me of some errors. You see, just because I delete the instance of an enemy doesn't mean I delete all the references that enemy has or the things that reference the enemy. So I have to deal with each pop-up by deleting the references, which are usually things like pathing. This process took a very long time. If you try to load too many maps, the amount of renderables becomes too much for the application and it crashes. So I had to only load like two to four maps at a time. The whole process of deletion probably took around 5 hours. I decided to start the game with a golden seed. I have access to fewer of them because not all the tree spirits are bosses, and golden seeds usually drop from them. It's only about 4 golden seeds missing though, so getting max flasks still won't be an issue. Right when I get into Limgrave, I can see just how empty the place looks. Areas that were alive with enemies and creatures are now completely desolate. There's just nothing anywhere. I don't really have anything else to do besides gather some items and take down a bunch of easy bosses. So the first thing that I wanted to do was buy the crafting kit and immediately realize I messed up. During my testing, I accidentally deleted the merchant, so I had to add him back. The first weird discovery of this mod was the caravans. Normally caravans are surrounded by a bunch of knights and nobles along with a couple trolls that drag the cart. Without them, the cart is stuck at the starting position. Now, I was under the impression that the reason you can't loot the chest while it's being pulled was because of the movement. I thought the cart needed to be fully stopped before you could loot it. However, this does not seem to be the trigger. The cart in the modern world is fully stopped with no enemies around it, but I can't open it. Normally going through the main gate at Stormvale Castle can be a bit dangerous. You are greeted with Ballista Fire six steps into the place. In DS Map Studio, the Ballistas count as their own separate enemy entities so they were removed. Now there is no danger that exists in the castle besides falling off the edge somewhere and Godric. When I started to delete enemies, I had thought about some possible issues that might arise. One of the first things I considered was the Renala fight. You have to damage specific scholars around the boss in order to drop Renala's shield, but if there's no scholars around, will this make the boss unbeatable? Turns out, it means exactly that. I got to Renala and was unable to do anything. I have no enemies to hit to damage the shield and my attacks to the shield of course do nothing. Renala has turned into an unbeatable boss. Renala is not the only boss that relies on non-boss enemies during their fight. To be a mariners have an attack where they summon other skeletons to fight you. No enemies means this man is blowing his horn for no reason. Another boss is Commander Nile. He usually has a lot of mobs around him which he can also buff. Without them, he ends up rallying nobody. And then there's the Regal Ancestor boss, which is supposed to heal itself by siphoning the life of the spectral wildlife around it. I had this boss at low health for a while, but because the entities were no longer in the boss area, the boss was unable to ever heal itself. I also lose access to a lot of the memory stones because I'm locked out of the different rises or towers. These locations usually require you to solve a puzzle. For example, the first one that I find in Weeping Peninsula requires me to kill three turtle shades. Since the turtles are non-existent, I can't kill them and therefore the door to the rise will remain locked forever. 
With all the enemies and animals being removed from the game, we've also pretty much gotten rid of rune farming as well. Unlike the enemies and animals, when we rest at a site of grace, the bosses do not spawn back. Which means for this run, we will have a limited number of runes who we can work with. With the help of this spreadsheet I was able to find from Clark LS on Reddit, we can see all the runes given for each boss. If we add all of them up, we get 7,443,500 runes. This is the amount we could potentially get if we killed every boss and never died before using them. However, we cannot get all of these runes before beating the game. First, we have Elden Beast. Since we're worried about the levels to beat the game, we don't really care about the runes we get from this final boss, since the game will be over by then. This subtracts half a million from the total. Another boss we have to eliminate is Renala, since we are unable to defeat her. Another boss I remove is Patches, since I'd rather have him as an NPC to buy things from rather than an extra 800 runes. This brings the total number of runes we can get from bosses down to 6,902,700. If we spent every single rune on levels, then the max level we could get to before the final boss would be 148. Again, this is if we don't spend any runes on upgrading weapons or buying items. However, the boss runes are not the only source of runes that we still have. First, there are the boss remembrances. As long as I don't plan on using most of the boss weapons, then I can just use them for levels. There are also all the other rune items that exist around the world. For example, the Lord's Rune, which is the highest value non-boss rune we can find, can be obtained in five locations. However, two of them are from non-boss Erdtree avatars. Since the enemies have been removed from the game, we really only have three that we can grab in a playthrough. Originally, I stated that we have no way to farm runes. Since enemies don't respawn and the rune items are a one-time find, how can we still farm runes? Well, there are things that still respawn when we rest at a grace, and they are the different ingredients found around the map. Flowers, rocks, and butterflies are some of the materials that respawn whenever resting. It would be an extremely annoying and slow way to farming runes, but it's technically possible. Another source of runes would be the random glowing skulls that can be found on the ground. Though I believe these are more random, making farming for these 200 runes a bit harder. There are some quests from NPCs that are no longer able to be completed because these quests require certain enemies. The first example I have to show is the Yura quest line. The first requirement for this quest is fighting the bloody finger that spawns outside Murkwater Cave. This doesn't actually seem to be necessary as I had this enemy removed, but the red summon sign still shows up for Yura and I to invade near the main academy gate. Though this is where the quest ends. We warp into the hostile NPC's world, but since I removed the enemy, nothing happens. We show up to this empty world with nothing to fight and nowhere to go. I can't even jump off anywhere to go back to my world. I have to quit out of the game. Since I can't kill the NPC host, I cannot move forward with Yura's quest. Another NPC questline that shows issues is Kenneth Heights. The very start of Kenneth's quest, you are tasked with traveling over to the Fort Height and defeating the enemies within the fort. Realistically, you only need to kill the Godric Knight at the top of the fort. However, since the enemy does not exist, we can't seem to help Kenneth. Even though the castle is completely empty, free for Kenneth to take up residence again, he is forever stuck in limbo, wanting us to eliminate these imaginary intruders. The actual trigger for the quest progression must be specifically linked to the knight being defeated, in the same way that the Ash of War Bloody Slash is awarded to you. Which by the way is an item that we cannot get, and there are a ton of items we are unable to get because we removed all the enemies. Starting with the more obvious items that become unobtainable, we have any weapon or armor that can be farmed. For example, the Dismounter, which is only dropped from Caden Cell Swords, or even full sets of armor like the Black Flame Monk set, which each piece is only obtainable by farming the Black Flame Monks. Then there are the items that we can't get that might not be so obvious. The extra boss runes are items that we can't obtain. I counted the mausoleums as enemies since they move around, damage the player, and can be taken down to a degree. They honestly probably don't count as enemies, but they're already out of the game, so we're just gonna roll with it. They leave their skulls behind along with the coffin we would normally get the extra boss room from, but it becomes impossible to interact with the object, so we have to be smart with the one boss remembrance we get. Next we have some larval tears. A couple can be found on the ground in various locations, but most of them are dropped by regular enemies. 
Going into the modded version of the game, I knew I would be limited on tiers, making me think I would need to be more conscientious of my build. I wasn't sure how strong I would be with the limited runes. If I really needed to switch to magic for a fight, I only had a couple chances to switch my build and then switch back if necessary. But with the whole Renalo thing, this doesn't even matter in the first place since I can't respect at all. Some talismans like the hammer talisman can't be acquired because I removed the invader that drops it. Another probably more important talisman that I can't get is the great jar talisman, again because the three invaders you need to defeat were removed. Also locked out of the Dragon Communion Seal since that drops from a single knight in the Stranded Graveyard. Gravity Will is dropped from a specific Alabaster Lord in Rhea Lucaria. Dragon Cult Prayer Book that only drops from a specific knight in Liernia, along with plenty of other items. As I was running to the fort in Caelid that holds half the Dectus Medallion, I found another interesting thing that I was not expecting. Grail was removed because she does not count as a boss. I removed her the same way I removed everything else, but for some reason her collision box stayed. After a bit of time, I also get the debuff. This debuff comes from Grail's roar, which decreases my defense and attack. Grail is not there to roar, and there was no sound or anything else before I got the debuff besides time going by. So it seems like the cause of the debuff isn't really even tied to the roar at all, or the enemy instance either. When you're on your way to Malekith, there is an ancient dragon that is waiting for you at the end of the path filled with a bunch of bird enemies. Similarly to what happened with Grail, the dragon is supposed to roar which causes the red lightning to strike certain spots on the ground. The red lightning attack still occurs without the dragon being present, and it's not just for show either. I found that I accidentally deleted the mimic tier boss fight because the initial enemy that shows when you enter the room is just a normal silver tier. Nearby is the real boss, which replaces the silver tier. It took me a bit to figure out how to exactly to add that silver tier back, but once I did, I didn't notice any changes in the boss fight. For the last bit of the game, there is no change that I could really find. The game pretty much turns into a boss rush at Malekith anyway, so no enemies being around doesn't really change the end game. Anyways, I hope you learned something new from this, and if not, I hope you at least found the video interesting. Alright, have fun.